This all started when Dua Lipa got sued for posting a photo of herself. Earlier this year, British singer Dua Lipa was sued after allegedly posting a paparazzi photo of herself on Instagram. The agency which owns the picture alleged that the Instagram post violated their copyright in the image. The singer's fans were understandably confused. Why couldn't she post a mundane image of herself standing in line at an airport? Well, according to Integral Images, which owns the copyright, Lipa's Instagram feed acts as a marketing tool for her music. The agency alleges that the photographs intentionally infringed on Integral's copyright and undercut its ability to profit from the photos. After all, Dua Lipa didn't pay to post that photo. The lawsuit seeks the statutory damages for an intentional copyright violation that amounts to $150,000. The agency is also asking for an order stopping Lipa from further acts of infringement. Now, Dua Lipa was not the only famous person sued for posting a picture of herself. Splash News sued Jennifer Lopez for posting a splash photo of her holding hands with Alex Rodriguez in 2017. A photographer sued Jessica Simpson after she posted a photo of herself leaving the Bowery Hotel in New York. The photographer said that he had only licensed the photo for limited use to the Daily Mail, but Simpson and her social media managers tweeted it out without licensing it. Splash News and Picture Agency sued Liam Hemsworth in 2018, claiming he posted its photos of him on Instagram without the company's permission. Paparazzo Robert Barbera sued Ariana Grande after she posted two of his photos on her Instagram in August 2018. And photographer Christopher Pastieri sued 50 Cent after 50 posted photographs taken by Pastieri during a 2014 reunion concert with G-Unit. So, do paparazzi photographers have the right to stalk famous people, profit from selling their images, then turn around and sue the famous person for posting photographs of themselves? Hey, Legal Eagles, it's time to think like a copyright lawyer because some of this is not exactly intuitive. Now, we've talked about copyright many times on this channel. Copyright is a legal device that gives the creator of a work of art the right to control how their work is used. When we use the word creator or author, that could mean writers, musicians, photographers, architects, software developers, or even people who design boats for a living. All of them are considered authors under the American copyright law, and the things that they produce are works of art. The protection for works of art comes from the Constitution. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8 gives Congress the power to, quote, promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. Scientific pursuits like machines or useful items are generally given patents, but artistic creations like novels and photographs are covered by copyright law. And because copyright is provided for in the Constitution, it's exclusively bound by federal law. And under 17 U.S.C. 106, if you have a copyright in something, you have the exclusive right to do a number of things, including make copies of that work of art, make adaptations and derivatives, distribute the work, publicly perform a play or uh, perform it in front of others, display a work in public, digitally transmit sound recordings, and in some circumstances, the right to receive attribution and prevent a destruction of a work. And these are the rights that photographers have when it comes to their photographs. According to the US Copyright Office, the owner of a work is generally the person who takes a photo. Generally, the only time this isn't the case is when there is a work for hire contract or you have an employee employer situation. And generally, you don't own the copyright just because you are the subject of a photo. This can even be the case when a person hires a photographer to take photos like a wedding photographer. It depends on what's in the contract. But if that contract is silent, then the photographer owns the copyright to those photos of the wedding, unless the photographer agreed in writing to transfer or license the copyrights to that to someone else, presumably the bride and groom. And the damages for a single instance of infringement can be quite steep. Under the Copyright Act, a copyright owner is entitled to an award of actual damages and disgorgement of all the infringer's profits attributable to infringement. And in the alternative, the plaintiff can elect an award of statutory damages for an amount up to $150,000 for each infringement. And that takes us to the paparazzi versus celebrities. In the internet age, it's dramatically changed what's at stake for paparazzi photographers. In the old days, they could take photographs and sell them to the highest bidder, and this was usually a magazine or a newspaper. Now, with the internet and social media, there's a whole new market for digital images. This is a blessing and a curse. Photographers can get their work seen all over the world almost instantly, but it also undercuts the market for exclusive images and makes it much easier to infringe. Also, since everyone has a camera in their pocket, uh, there's no longer exclusivity when it comes to photographs of celebrities. And meanwhile, celebrities themselves are now content creators. They make a lot of money by posting images of themselves on social media accounts. And the top influencer accounts like Cristiano Ronaldo can get up to a million dollars per post. And as you can see, The Rock, Ariana Grande, uh, several sisters Kardashian, and several family members Jenner are also believed to earn hundreds of thousands of dollars per post. 
Photographers and their agencies claim it isn't fair for celebrities to distribute images of themselves without paying for a license for the person who took that photograph. This is the dynamic that has created the current environment where celeb photographers are suing the same people they photograph. Now, there are lots of these cases, but let's talk about one of the biggest, exposure versus Kardashian. The UK photo agency licensed pictures of Kardashian leaving a Miami restaurant to the Daily Mail. But when Kardashian used those very same images on her Instagram feed without their permission, it was available to all 67 million people who follow Khloe Kardashian. Exposure sued Kardashian for copyright infringement in 2017, seeking damages of more than $175,000 for the post. Not that it would have been a defense, but the Instagram post didn't even credit Exposure. And uh, to add insult to injury, Kardashian or her team altered the image to remove the copyright management information, the watermark that showed Exposure as the copyright owner of the image. The copyright management information or CMI refers to the watermark indicating where the image has from. You might've seen things like Via Getty, uh, which does not mean it it was taken by a person named Via Getty. It means that Getty owns the rights to that particular image. Now, we don't know what the final terms were in this particular case. Kardashian and Exposure settled the case out of court and Kardashian deleted the post. Kardashian apparently acknowledged that she had indeed committed copyright infringement with her Instagram post. She tweeted, quote, yes, I have to license some of the images first. A paparazzi sued me in the past for reposting images of myself. So now it just takes me a little longer because I have to go and license the images so they don't get my money bag emoji. Makes no sense. Yeah, the law doesn't make sense to Chloe. She, after all, is not the Kardashian that became a lawyer. And uh, in fairness, other celebrities agree. They contend that they are being stalked every day by people who want to make money from their image and likeness. And to be fair, paparazzi photogs sometimes use special lenses to take photos of people inside their homes. Famous people like Princess Diana have been literally hounded to death by overzealous photographers. But then on the other hand, there are people like Lisa Rinna who just says to hell with it and intentionally and repeatedly post images that she hasn't licensed in blatantly violating the Copyright Act. Rinna has now been sued for over a million dollars for posting eight photographs that she didn't license. Rinna said that if the photographer had demanded a lower amount, a nominal fee, she would have paid. Rinna and her lawyers claim that the copyright law was never intended to allow photographers to profit from images of celebrities and quote, then turn around and sue those same celebrities for posting their own images on social media. Well, I hate to be that guy, but actually Lisa, this is exactly what the Copyright Act was designed to do. The act gives creators the right to sue anyone who infringes on their work, even if that person happens to be the subject of the photograph. But not every celebrity has struck out making arguments to the contrary. Now in 2018, Gigi Hadid was sued by a photographer who took a photograph of her leaving her apartment building. Hadid even struck a pose for him. The photographer worked for the agency exclusively. Hadid posted the image to her Instagram without permission or payment. The agency filed an infringement lawsuit seeking statutory damages. The law seemed to be clear cut in this case. Hadid posted an image of herself that she didn't own. This should be a slam dunk for the agency, right? Well, not exactly because Hadid's lawyer got the case dismissed on a technicality. The agency failed to register the photographs before filing the lawsuit. Now, you don't have to file with the Copyright Act to get a copyright in something, but filing your copyright with the Copyright Office gives you a bunch of benefits. And the Supreme Court has now ruled that actual registration of a copyright is a prerequisite to filing a copyright action, which resolved a long running split in the US circuit courts. The New York District Court held that the Supreme Court's decision foreclosed the paparazzi agency's copyright infringement claim against Hadid. However, this lawsuit turned out to be notable for other reasons because Hadid raised some novel theories that other celebrities are now trying to develop to defend themselves against paparazzi lawsuits. Hadid's first theory was that she co-authored the work since she posed and smiled. Under this theory, she's entitled to ownership of the image, quote, because she posed for the camera and thus contributed many of the elements that the copyright law seeks to protect. Now, this is a stretch, but it's not entirely without legal basis. A joint work is a work prepared by two or more individuals with the intent intention that their separate contributions be merged into a single work. Co-authors own the work's copyright jointly and equally unless the authors make an agreement otherwise. Each joint author has the right to exercise any and all of the exclusive rights inherent in the joint work. Now, the primary problem with this argument is that for a work to be a product of two or more creators, there must be a shared intent. The photographer certainly didn't agree with Hadid that this was a collaboration. The picture was unplanned and happened uh, when Hadid spontaneously left the apartment. But really the whole point of paparazzi photos is that they're taken without the celebrity's permission. And that was argued in this particular case. 
So it's hard to argue the mutually exclusive arguments that this was both unplanned and unwanted, but also it was a collaboration where everyone intended for their efforts to become a joint work. Hadid also argued that her use of the photographs should be considered a fair use, which we've talked a lot about on this channel. This is definitely not your standard fair use argument. And Hadid argued that when she reposted the images, she did it with a different purpose than the agency. Her use was personal, whereas the agency wanted to exploit her popularity for commercial purposes. She also argued that without her contribution to the image, it wouldn't really exist. Now, the court didn't address this argument because the case was decided on procedural grounds, but Hadid sort of misses the mark when she makes this argument. The purpose of her use really wasn't that different from the paparazzi's use. It was to exploit her popularity in a, a candid photo. She wasn't, for example, criticizing the composition of the photo or using the photo for some educational purpose. This is why people license photos that are taken by other people. She was effectively using the photo for exactly the same reason the paparazzi took the photo in the first place. So well, Hadid made some novel arguments, they probably wouldn't hold water and she's probably not gonna change copyright laws overnight. Now, what about the right of publicity? Some celebrities have tried to sue paparazzi on the theory that the photographers who profit off of someone's images are actually violating the celebrity's right of publicity. Wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. sued Splash News after paparazzi took photos of an injured OBJ outside his home in New Jersey. The photographer sold the image to Splash News and Picture Agency. Beckham posted the image to Instagram Instagram and Splash News sued him. Beckham filed a counterclaim arguing that this was an attempt to extort him in violation of his right to publicity. After all, you have a right to benefit from your own name and likeness. Otherwise, everyone could simply use photographs of you in a commercial context. So there's gotta be a line somewhere, right? And Beckham argued in the complaint, quote, Splash's licensing of photographs of an injured Beckham not only exploits Beckham's image for personal financial gain, but is also patently gruesome. And while this generally relies on state law, the right to publicity generally protects a person from having their likeness used for advertising or other commercial purposes without their permission. Of course, this runs straight into the First Amendment because you have a right to make the speech that you want to make. And of course, in the case of Odell Beckham Jr.'s injury, that's certainly a newsworthy event, which makes it receive even more First Amendment protection. So generally, uh, the right of publicity means that a photographer has the right to take photographs of famous people and sell or license those photographs, but they can't sell products with someone's image on them. So if you happen to get a great photograph of Odell Beckham Jr., uh, you could license that photograph to a newspaper or magazine or sell it, but you could not, however, sell t-shirts or mugs bearing uh, the, the face of Odell Beckham Jr. Only he can do that or someone that has his permission. Now the OBJ case settled before the court addressed his arguments, but generally they were probably going to lose since the right of a photographer to take the picture of a newsworthy person is pretty well established. Now, if you're being hounded by the paparazzi, you'll probably need to stay home to avoid their cameras. But luckily HelloFresh, today's sponsor, will deliver whether the paparazzi are there or not. And with the new year, HelloFresh is a great way to eat healthily and deliciously. In fact, HelloFresh has a whole variety of calorie smart, carb smart, pescatarian, and veggie options. Now, I'm a do-it-yourself person, and I have to say, I was initially pretty skeptical about HelloFresh. I'm a pretty good cook, so I didn't think I really needed the help, but I actually loved it. Even for an experienced cook, HelloFresh delivers new ingredients and recipes that I'd never try on my own. HelloFresh generally keeps everyone's favorite meals and then rotates new ones all the time. And recently, I've enjoyed crispy Parmesan chicken, white cheddar Wonder Burgers, and pork sausage bell pepper pasta. Now, I don't know about you, but I probably never would have attempted those on my own. And it's not just meals. HelloFresh's marketplace features a variety of add-ons for breakfast, dessert, and seasonal snacks like energy bars and cookie dough. And it saves time too. I usually increase the size of my HelloFresh serving so I can enjoy the leftovers for lunches. And of course, everything was delivered straight to my door so I didn't have to do any shopping. The produce actually gets to you faster than a grocery store so it arrives at peak freshness and flavor. And it's also super easy to save time. HelloFresh cuts out meal planning and prep so the recipes only take 20 to 30 minutes to cook literally less time that it would take to cook than it would to do the shopping itself. And it's also incredibly sustainable. Since the ingredients are pre-portioned, there's less prep and less wasted food. The packaging is almost entirely made from recyclable and already recycled content. And HelloFresh's carbon footprint is actually 25% lower than that for meals that are made from store-bought groceries. 
So if you'd like to try HelloFresh, and I recommend that you at least try it, you can go to HelloFresh.com and use the code LegalEagle16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. So again, for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts, go to HelloFresh.com and use the code LegalEagle16, or click on the link that is below or the one that's on screen right now and use the code LegalEagle16. Plus, clicking on those links really helps out this channel. And while you're at it, click on this playlist over here with my other real law reviews, or I'll see you in court.